This is Tim Ottinger of Agile in a Flash, Clean Code, and Industrial Logic. Today I'd like to talk to you about pair programming. I promise if you sit through the presentation that I'll tell you the real secret on how to make pair programming work. First, imagine someone found a miracle method of doing software. It reduces defects, it's faster, um, work is done sooner, it's considered better, better focus, better morale, the quality of the code is up. Sounds wonderful. Individuals who participate have a large number of benefits. They develop better skills, they're recognized for what they can do, they improve their team, they can work on good days and bad days with roughly the same result. Really amazing stuff. But the organizational benefits are really awesome. More people do more work better with higher quality and can re return the work around more quickly. You think people would be totally delighted until they hear that the practice is pair programming. Why the pushback? Well, let's examine. There is an ugly, unsavory, dark, menacing cloud of misperception around pairing based on prior practice. After all, we can only evaluate new practices in light of past experiences. Pair programming. Okay, that sounds an awful lot like asking for help. If I'm always asking for help, that indicates that I'm in well over my head. If I'm over my head, maybe I'm underskilled for my job. Could I possibly be incompetent? If I prayer program all the time, does that mean I'm no good? Oh, of course not. But also, there's this idea of efficiencies of scale. If I have multiple programmers working on the same job, isn't that costing twice as much? What do I do about the wasted manpower? Interestingly enough, it saves manpower does not cost, even though it sounds like it would. But two guys working at one keyboard, that sounds like you're wasting a whole set of hands. It sounds daft. And it would be, except that typing is not the bottleneck. Programming is about reading, learning, communicating, understanding, hypothesizing. The thinking is the work. The typing is the least part of what we do. This is why some people who aren't good typists at all make perfectly fine programmers. Then, of course, there's a discomfort factor. This is not going to be fun. Uh, let's take a look at some of the reasons people have for disliking. I feel your pain. But we know that we're good soldiers, and we certainly do with a fair amount of discomfort every day. Do people really like working by themselves in cubicles? Do people really like not being able to ask people questions because other people are busy doing their work too? Do we really feel like we're learning and growing and developing? Do we really feel like we can compare ourselves to our peers and, and learn lessons every day? No, we don't. Not if we're not pairing. And we soldier through that. There are a large number of uncomfortable workspaces, um, including time reporting down to the 15 minute period, that we accept in order to be good soldiers. So we have to take it on balance. Are the benefits worth more than the discomforts? Now, everybody hates programming in pairs a little bit. Let's talk about the kinds of pair programming we hate. First, we have the worker rester pattern. Notice also, um, there is a concave workspace here and a corner desk with monitors. The gentleman who's doing the programming is the only one who has access to the keyboard and the mouse. So, the young lady has very little to do besides check her telephone messages and uh, check out the pictures on Facebook. What else is she going to do? 
Well, you could also go to the worker watcher pattern. Since she can't actually do anything, her time is wasted while his time is used to produce value. She can get involved as a critic. Here he does the work and she makes fun of him. The next anti-pattern is the pair marriage. The same pair of people working every day in the same place. If they're friends, it's not too awful. But you lose a lot of the value of pairing because you develop a hive mind between the two of you. Eventually, you see solutions the same way. You see problems as the same way. You will eventually end up making the same typos without noticing them. When you're pairing with the same person, you develop a shared brain. Here's the master-slave pattern. I like to picture Andy here saying, Igor, bring my creation to life. Then there's the bully-victim pattern. Not only does the bully tell you what to do, then he makes fun of you for doing it poorly. These ugly pair programming smells have been collected up on a card number 37 from Agile and Flash and roughly divided into these groups. Unequal access, meaning some people can't reach the keyboard, can't see the screen. Keyboard domination, in which one person does not share it. The unhealthy relationships, people who don't like each other, don't work well together. The worker rester patterns. The everyone does their own work was not covered with a picture. That's a situation where if I pair with you, it puts my work at jeopardy, even while giving you a boost. Therefore, I will be punished for helping. Never healthy. And finally, endless debate. But there's other kinds of pairing that we all love and have done for years. The rescue. The training exercise. The brainstorming meeting. experimenter and researcher. Is that really pairing? And then there is a pairing practice that we all dream of. You've probably had this early in your programming career. Here's how the dialogue runs. this kind of work. Two people engaged in making something better. It's awesome. This is the kind of pair programming we want, the kind we like to talk about. In the next show, I'll discuss how those things can work for you, some strategies and techniques.